Hey everyone, Jason here. Um, as you can see in front of me, I have the new Texas Giant uh, coaster cutout from Coaster Dynamics um, that I assembled in the last video. If you haven't watched that video yet, you may want to watch that one first. Um, but today I'm actually going to be painting the coaster cutout. Um, and to do that, I'm going to be doing a little bit of disassembly, not a ton. Um, honestly, it's probably a little bit easier if you paint this as you go along. You don't want to paint all the individual pieces first, um, but throughout assembly, there are definitely some things that are going to be easier to paint if other pieces aren't in the way. Um, for this, I'm probably going to remove the vehicle from the stand, uh, first off. Um, when you're removing these things, you want to be super careful that you don't break anything. So be careful there. So we're going to remove the vehicle from the stand. Um, I'm also going to remove the restraints from inside the vehicle. Uh, so we'll pull those out. Um, that'll just make painting the inside of the vehicle a little bit easier, as well as painting the restraints. And then also, I'm going to be making a few modifications to the wood. Um, the first thing I did uh, when, I, when I decided to do this is, it, when you decide to do this, uh, you wanna make sure you go in with a plan. Um, I found several reference images uh, online of the train that I wanted to do. Uh, with New Texas Giant, I could have done black, red, or turquoise. I already have a turquoise uh, coaster cut out. Um, and with New Texas Giant, I felt like red was the color that it's most known for. Um, so that's the color I'm gonna go for. Um, I'm also going to make a few modifications to the wood here. Um, definitely not required. Once again, this is all beyond the instructions. Um, you can really do whatever you want at this point. Um, but the, one of the biggest things I wanted to do is if you notice the, the front of the new Texas Giant train, uh, it actually says Texas Giant across it right there on the curved uh, front of the hood. Uh, however, on the coaster cutout, the front of the hood is squared off um, and there's really not room for the words on the front edge or on the top edge. Um, so I'm actually going to do some sanding and, and curve that off so that we can add the wording on there. Um, and to make that easier, I'm also going to remove uh, the horn. So I'm going to quickly and easily remove those uh, right there. Um, so to get started, we're going to start with sanding. Um, I have a little bit of a, a, a power sander here and I also have some sandpaper here handy. Um, Want to be very careful. Um, if you sand something away, uh, ultimately you can't get it back. Um, so we're going to start slow um, and just try to get a little bit of shaping here on the front of the vehicle so that we can add that wording in. Um, now we're going to use a, a finer sandpaper to just kind of uh, brush off a, a little bit of the excess and smooth it out here. Um, to do the wording, uh, I've actually created a little bit of a decal there. Um, that's what's going to be going across the front. I just want to kind of check the sizing of it right now. Uh, see if that's going to fit. Uh, it's getting close. Uh, we're going to just sand it a little bit more uh, right here. Like I said, it's going to kind of be going down over the curvature that we've created there. Um, the front of this vehicle was originally very flat. Um, before we move on to the next step, I'm going to pull in a vacuum here and uh, kind of clean up my mess. Now that we've finished sanding and cleaning that up, uh, it's time to move on to the painting. For painting, I picked up these paints from Walmart. Uh, most of the colors are available for about 50 cents each. Um, some of the metallic ones and glossy. Uh, maybe a dollar or two. Um, also brushes come relatively cheap. Uh, before painting, I'd recommend putting something down. This is packing paper um, that you usually use when you're moving um, that I've put down to protect my table here. I also have a cup of water, um, a few brushes of different sizes and a paper towel um, to help clean up as we go along. Um, to get started painting, um, I'm actually gonna start with the hood area here. And the reason for that is because I want that area to be dry when I apply the decal. Since I'm applying a decal to that part, I want that part to be dry first. Um, and so that's gonna be done using my hot rod head red here that I've picked up. Uh, so I'm just gonna put some of the hot rod red down here on the paper. And I'm gonna grab uh, my largest brush here since that's kind of a large area that I'm, I'm gonna be painting here. Uh, pick up some of the paint and simply start brushing. Uh, one of the things that you can do uh, if, if the colors aren't exactly what you're looking for um, is try to mix other colors uh, to get uh, more of what you're looking for. Real easy, um, you know, this isn't something you have to be really experienced to do. 
Uh, the first uh, model I'd ever painted was the, the coaster cutout behind me of the, the Dueling Dragons. Um, I just kind of picked up the paints and brushes and started going. Uh, and like I said, you always want to have reference images um, up available for you to look at. Um, I have the, the ones on my, my screen that I showed you earlier. Uh, those are just photos that I found online of the, the new Texas Giant. If you have your own photos, um, that works as well. Um, but yeah, you can just simply go along and, and start brushing. Um, in areas where there is the laser etching, you may not want to lay the paint on quite as thick. Um, if you lay it on too thick, that laser etching will disappear. Um, but if you, if you just kind of do a light coat over it, um, then that will still show through and still show through some of the design of the vehicle. Um, another thing to note here is that as you're painting, uh, you don't have to be super careful with your first uh, color. Um, this one I'm using the biggest brush, I'm kind of getting in here on the rim. I'm still being pretty careful um, to try not to get into the areas that aren't going to be red. Um, however, if I do get some paint on those areas, I'm going to be painting over those with other colors as well. Um, and so I'll be able to, to fix most of that. Um, also on the, the darkened edges uh, from the cutting, uh, those do require a little bit more paint if you want to get rid of that color in there. I think you'll also find that the, the paint tends to go uh, a long ways. Uh, you don't need a ton of it to, to do one of these models. Um, with the Dueling Dragons full train, the only color that I needed a second bottle of was the turquoise. Um, and that's the color used on the entire track as well as on uh, every single ride vehicle. Um, so very heavily used color. Um, I needed two bottles of that one. Um, the rest of these paints I only need one bottle of um, and most of the, the colors you see here are left over from that project as well. Um, I did have to purchase a couple different ones such as this red. Um, I didn't have that for the, the previous project. Um, but most of your colors are going to go quite a long way and so you know for, for really you know five or six dollars worth of paint you're going to be able to, to add just a lot of character to your model. So there's at least one coat of all of the red on the front of the vehicle. Um, I'm actually going to keep going back and, and complete doing the red right now um, and then we'll fill in the other colors around it. Throughout the build you'll notice that I keep looking over at the laptop. Um, once again that's just for reference, uh, making sure that I'm only painting the, the parts that are supposed to be red red um, and leave the other colors to paint their respective the other areas to paint their respective colors later. Um, but right now I'm just kind of going through and, and doing all of the red. Now as you can see here, uh, we've, we've got a pretty good first coat of red on the vehicle, a little bit on other areas that it's not supposed to be on, um, but really decent coverage, except there are a few areas, if you look really closely, that are dark, kind of on the edges of the wood where the laser etching was. Um, areas such as that really do need a second coat. Some of the other areas you can probably get by um, without a second coat, um, but we're kind of going to go around now and just kind of touch up uh, the first coat and see what we got. Now for some of the finer details, I'm actually going to switch to a smaller brush here um, that'll let me get kind of down into some of the, the crevices um, where I really need to, to get some, just a little bit of red paint. And there you have completed red on the train. Um, this has got to dry and after it dries I may want to go through and do a little bit of touch up in certain areas with the red. Um, but overall, I feel like it looks pretty good. Um, and once the, we get some of the other colors in there, you'll really start to see it, it, it start to take shape. Um, the next pieces I, I kind of want to focus on are the pieces that I took off. Uh, so ultimately the, the bull horns as well as the restraints. Um, we'll probably do the restraints first um, and then do the bull horns and the seats 
um, kind of at the same time because they're going to use a little bit of the same color. So we'll set this off to the side here. For the restraints, we're going to have red handles here at the top with black handles, black bars, and black shin guards going across. Um, and so I'm going to get some black and do the black first, and then we'll do the red handles there at the top. Um, once again, the black is just one that I have left over from the previous cutout that I did. Um, so if you're going to be doing multiple cutouts, a lot of these colors can be used multiple times. Um, I'm going to take a clean brush here. Um, don't need to use one of the ones in the water right now. Um, we'll just go on here and start painting uh, the, the black right onto here. Um, for a color like black, uh, you really may not need uh, more than one coat. It, it goes on pretty dark uh, and you really can't see anything underneath it. Uh, so we're just going to kind of quickly go over this. Um, you'll also find that the paint dries to the touch at least uh, pretty quickly. A full dry is going to take a little bit of time. Um, but you know, within a, a few minutes, you're able to start handling the items that you've painted. And so, you know, if you're worried about uh, smudging the paint, um, you really don't need to be too much um, after you've let it dry for just a couple of minutes. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna just kind of get in here and get the black. I feel like we've gotten pretty good black coverage there. Um, so we're actually going to set that piece down now and we'll move on and paint the black on the other three as well. Now that we've completed all the black on these handles, I'm going to move on to painting the red um, that goes on the top of the restraints. When you start painting the colors up next to each other, this is when you really got to be a little bit more careful. Um, make sure that you're not getting, you know, a lot of your, I don't want a lot of this red down into the black area. I did the black first, and so the, the red may not show through it very much. Um, but still, you want to be careful to make sure that you're not you know, getting a lot of uh, over paint. You just want to get right to the edges of the black and get the red filled in there. And once again, like I said, the, the paint kind of dries to the touch. I am getting a little bit of black paint on my hands, uh, but really it's not affecting the black paint on the restraints. If it does, it's pretty easy to just go in and, and, and touch that up. Um, but really, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Um, paint does dry fairly quick. Now, as I mentioned earlier with the red, um, around the edges where there's the wood burning from the laser, um, you really do need a couple of coats. You know, on the top and bottom, uh, you really don't. Um, but in the areas that are darker on the wood, uh, a couple of coats really help hide uh, the wood burning around the edge. So the black, that wasn't necessary. Uh, but now that I've finished each of these restraints, I'm going to go around each of them again and just add another coat of the red to, to kind of cover up a little bit of that wood burning. Um, and it's not a big deal if some of it's still shining through and ultimately you can decide what's what's important to you and your model. Um, in the end, uh, paint in the bottom is probably just a little bit of a waste. It's a detail like like to, to, to look at when I'm doing this, um, but ultimately once we put these things back on, we probably won't be able to see the bottom of the handles anyways. Um, so, so focusing on things like that probably isn't all that important. Um, but you know, the edges, those will definitely be visible. So I'm gonna definitely go through or go around each of these again um, and make sure that I have all of those edges with a good cover of paint. That's gonna do it for the restraints. Um, they all look pretty good there. Now that I've given the ride vehicle uh, some time to dry, I'm actually gonna take a look at this again. Um, just make sure that I got all of the, you know, a good good coverage around it. Um, make sure that, you know, there's nothing sticking to the paint. Looks like there's a little bit of dust or something coming in there. Um, but now that, like I said, it's had a good chance to dry, I'm gonna go around and make sure that I just don't need to touch up anywhere um, and do, do some minor touch up around. Um, just places that may have been missed or may have needed a second coat um, to, to cover the darker wood. We've completed the touch up there. 
Um, the next piece that I'm going to do is going to be the horn that goes at the front of the vehicle. Um, I'm actually going to do this piece because um, this is another piece that probably needs to dry before we reattach it to the main vehicle. Um, so the horn is mostly white, uh, but it's a little bit of an off-white. I didn't have the right color paint exactly, um, but we should be able to accomplish what we want uh, by doing primarily white here with maybe just a tinge of brown and maybe even just a little tinge of orange. So looking at the horn in photos, um, the horn is, like I said, it's a little bit of an off-white. Um, in the center, you kind of have a little bit of a, a long horn, a burnt orange, more of a, a brownish color with a little bit of orange in there. Um, they didn't have any burnt orange paint at Walmart when I got this. Um, so I'm just going to be kind of mixing a little bit together here, uh, just trying to get it to, to look, you know, just a little bit how I want it to be. I'm grab just a little bit of orange, mix that in. I want to make sure you mix it good so you don't have streaking throughout it. And then we'll, we'll simply apply um, this, this paint to the horns. And like I said, it's just a, a little bit of a, a dirty white for, for the most part. Um, and then the, the, the longhorn orange in the middle, which we'll, we'll do that part second. Um, but to, to get to the dirty white, we're going to mix a little bit of that brown and orange into the white. Pulling the horns off and, and painting them while they're not on the vehicle also does mean that I can paint the bottoms of it. Um, once again, that may not be important, uh, but you know, while I have it off, I may as well do it. This I'm going to continue going around with the brush, kind of wipe away some of the excess paint. And as I mentioned in the middle, there's a little bit of this uh, burnt orange color. Um, and it's kind of splotchy. Um, it, it, it's mostly brownish. Um, I'm going to do mostly brown there um, with just a little bit of orange. Uh, the other thing that this color is going to be used for too is the seats. Um, so I want to make sure I have a, a little bit there uh, so we can get that. Um, and as I mentioned, so there's you, you, you see the, the dirty white horns um, and then this color is a little bit splotchy here in the middle, um, so I'm just kind of, kind of, uh, not not get it on there super thick and not get it on there, you know, perfectly. Uh, mostly because it's not perfect on the actual vehicle. It's a little bit splotchy there in the middle. Um, it is a little bit more concentrated in the middle, so I may do a little bit more there. Um, make sure we get it over the top. So gonna get a the little fine tip brush here and get a little bit more of this this whitish color again and kind of do a couple of streaks in there just kind of mix this together and in the end there's my completed horns for the front of the vehicle like I said you don't want it to be perfect um, if you look at the actual vehicles the, the the burnt orange and the white is a little bit splotchy on there um, we have that dirty white um, but overall I'm pretty happy with the way that that turned out um, as I mentioned before this is the same color I'm gonna use for the seats inside of the vehicle too. And so while I have that color there, uh, I'm gonna actually just gonna go in and, and, and start painting that now. You wanna make sure that you get into each of the little crevices there, um, but ultimately you don't wanna get any of this brown onto the red. Um, you just simply wanna to keep going and be very careful to, to make sure that you're only getting this onto the seats. Um, now that you're on your second color, you have to be a little bit more careful um, about painting up next to other things. When you're mixing colors of paint, it's typically probably a pretty good idea to make sure you have enough to complete what you're trying to do. Um, I didn't have enough of the, the brownish orange here, um, but I should be able to get it matched pretty closely here. Um, like I said, the brown that I have is mostly, the brown that I have is, is pretty close to, to what the actual color is going to be. Um, and we're going to, you know, mix in some orange here. And I might do a little bit of a light coat over what I've already done, uh, just to make sure that it, that it continues to match. Um, also, as you're painting, you want to make sure that you get down into some of the cracks. Um, 
such as between the seats here. Uh, it, it's not always easy to get some paint in there, uh, but it, it's very important to make sure you're filling in those cracks. And as you paint, it's not a bad idea to, to look at it from different angles, uh, make sure that you're getting good coverage on everything, um, especially uh, down in the cracks where you can see stuff. Um, and a lot of the cracks you're not able to see um, deep in there, um, but there are certain areas that you can see that the raw wood down inside. Um, I'm actually gonna get a finer brush here uh, to get down into some of these cracks here between the seeds. Just get a little bit of paint down in there. Uh, so that I'm not able to see any of the raw wood anymore. And there we have the completed seats. Um, so those should be good just as they are there. Moving on, I think I want to finish the inside of the vehicle. Um, so you can see, like I said, the seats and the red are now done. I'll probably have to do a little bit of touch up on the red a little bit, cover up some of the brown that I got on it. Um, but the floor inside of the vehicle is kind of a metallic uh, silvery color. Um, and so for that, I have a metallic silver here. Um, however, this color is a little bit darker um, than what I'm, what I'm hoping for, what I'm going for. Uh, this is a color I used quite a bit on the, the last Nano Coaster too, so I know exactly what it's gonna look like when it dries. Um, but I also have a white pearl uh, metallic color here as well. Um, that, so mixing the two metallic colors together, I should be able to mix the, you know, the white and the gray together and bring uh, the, that color down, make it a little bit lighter. Um, for this, I'm gonna start with my biggest brush. I'm gonna get some of the, the paint out of it really quick. Uh, one thing you'll wanna do as you do this is make sure you refresh your water every once in a while. I've refreshed it twice so far, um, just with off camera. Um, but I, I've refreshed it a couple of times uh, just to, to make sure that it stays clean. Um, we're gonna mix these colors together and try to get a little bit a lighter silver. Uh, still probably a little bit too dark. Uh, let's add a little bit more white to that. Um, and this is a color that I'm going to be using quite a bit, so I don't, I don't mind mixing up a little bit of extra. Um, I'm going to be using this inside the vehicle, but also on the front of the vehicle. Um, the, the metallic chrome on the front of the vehicle is also going to be uh, the, the same color as inside the vehicle. So keep mixing this here. And then I think we have a pretty good color. Get a little bit of the paint off of there and then just begin painting inside the vehicle. For this color, I'm also gonna paint the runners on the side of the, the train uh, the same silver, at least on the top. Um, looking more at the pictures, I'm probably gonna paint the sides of them red. Um, I didn't do that the first time I did the red, um, but we'll come back and get that in a little, while, little bit. Um, I'm just gonna try to get some good coverage on this, this layer here um, with the metallic. That brush is a little bit bigger than what I'm, I'm trying to get done. And I'll switch to a smaller one here, try to get a little bit here. Let me get a little bit more of the finer details on the top of this. And this is the color I'm probably gonna need a couple coats of as well. Um, uh, first off, it is painting a little bit over some red overspill that I had, uh, but it also seems to be a thinner paint. The metallic ones, are a little bit thinner than the, the other paints, and so you do need to go a little bit thicker when painting with them. I don't know why that is, uh, but that does seem to be the case. So there's kind of one completed coat of the metallic silver inside. Um, as I mentioned, this one does go on a little bit thinner. Uh, I'm gonna need to do a second coat for sure, um, but I'm gonna let that one set and dry for a little bit there. Um, and I'm also going to paint the silver that goes on the front of the vehicle now. Um, so on the front of the vehicle, um, basically the entire grille, the bumper are both chrome. Um, the lights are going to be white and then the, the license plate is going to be white and then the bottom lights down in the bumper are more of an orange amber color. Um, so I'm actually going to paint all of uh, the, the front with this metallic gray except for the license plate and the lights. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave those as is um, and then that way I can uh, paint those two things, uh, yeah, those things just the plain metallic white. Um, and then I'm going to try to make a metallic orange to go over um, the lights down here on the bumper. Um, but we'll get there in just a minute. 
uh, but until then I don't, I don't want to have to paint over the, the gray where I'm going to have white. Um, however, the, the orange should be able to paint over it just fine. So the lights, I'm okay getting metallic, uh, but anywhere that the white's going to be, I'm just going to leave that empty. And by doing both of the chrome sections at the same time here, I'm, I'm kind of able to uh, let the one dry with the first coat while I do the second or the first coat of the other section and then go back and do the second coat and then you know same thing re repeat come back to the front and, and finish the, the second coat up here. Now down on the front of the vehicle there's a lot of fine details and for this I'm actually going to get the, the smallest brush that I have um, just washed it off and then dry it off really quick here on the paper towel um, get the, this, this fine point brush to kind of paint around the headlights um, with, the, with this chrome. And there you can see the front of the vehicle design starting to come together as well. Um, now that I've got the first coat there, I'm going to go back to the back of the vehicle and do my second coat of metallic here. Make sure I get just really good coverage. Make sure that uh, you don't see any wood, that the, there's no red shining through down on the floor. Um, just go all the way around this, this whole back section again. So that we have much better coverage of the panels there. Um, and now we'll move on to, to the second coat of the, the front of the train as well. Um, just make sure there's none of the wood showing through. Um, make sure that there's, there's no spillage of the red, red paint or any of the other colors of paint up here at the front. Uh, just make sure we get good coverage all the way around. Uh, we also don't want to go too thick so that the, the laser etching doesn't show through either. Um, it's not going to show through perfectly um, with, with the paint on there, uh, but we do want some of those details to continue to show through on the vehicle. I want to make sure we get the side of these bumpers as well that wrap around to the side of the vehicle. Um, it adds a little bit of character to the side, uh, but the, the chrome needs to definitely continue around. Um, and pop a little bit there in the middle of the red section. Now that we have the chrome done on the front, um, I'm actually going to go right into doing the metallic white for the light and for the license plate. Um, so for this I'm just going to get the plain white uh, pearl metallic paint here. And this paintbrush is about the same width as the license plate. Um, so once again, wash that off really good, make sure there's no straight paint on there, make sure it's dry from the paper towel, um, and then we'll get this white metallic, and we'll just go right over the license plate area. Um, this one we definitely want to be careful with, there is the, it says Six Flags in Texas on the license plate, so we don't want to cover up the, the laser etching there. We literally just want to make this area white, uh, but it'll still allow that to show through. Same thing on the lights, we just want to get a nice uh, little bit of white metallic right over the, the front of those headlights, um, but once again not too thick, just enough to, to make them white, make them stand out just a little bit. I mean, this paint, once again, it's going on really thin, so I'm, I'm probably going to need a couple coats of it to, to go over this. Let that dry for a minute. Um, for the for the next step, uh, we also have uh, the little orange lights as well. Uh, for the orange lights, I want to also use uh, the, this white metallic just as a little bit of a base, um, but mixing it with uh, my orange paint. Use a smaller brush here. Uh, get that nice and dried off. Kind of mix our, our white and our orange white metallic and our orange together there. Get a little bit of a metallic -y orange paint. And we'll come into these orange, uh, the little round headlight areas, I'll just kind of fill that in. And this is once again is on top of the silver metallic, um, which should also help with the coloring as well. So you can see there it's starting to come together. Um, there's still a little bit of work to do. Um, once again, the, the metallic paints are very thin. Uh, definitely require a few more coats uh, than the other paints to, to really get full coverage. 
the license plate area again, as well as the headlights. Also gonna get a little bit more of this orange paint. Fill those both in. Um, it's gonna take a few more coats probably, but I'm gonna let those dry for a moment. Um, and I'm gonna kind of move on to the, the, the bottom and the side of the vehicle here a little bit. Um, so we've already done quite a bit of red. Um, however, I'm gonna do a little bit more red. So the, the sides down here should be red as well. There's probably gonna be a little bit of touch up above, above where I got a little bit of spillage on the chrome. Uh, so we can get a little bit more red paint out here. And get our, our, our big brush again. Uh, make sure that that's all cleaned out. Get this red paint and start painting uh, the sides down here. Also going to use it to get the edge of the runner there. We got a little bit of chrome spill over, um, but I didn't you know, get full coverage because I knew that I wanted to do red right there. Uh, so we're going to just take some red and go right along the edge there. I try not to get any on top, just only get the, the red edge. We don't want any on top or bottom. As I went around, you could see a little bit more of the new Texas Giant Red being added. Um, for the bottom of the train, you can kind of do whatever you'd like to do. Um, I already have the red paint here and it was kind of already getting on the bottom edge, uh, just going around with the red. And so I just decided to continue with the red. Um, when I get to the wheel assemblies and the chassis, I'll switch it up. Um, but for most of the bottom of the, the train, I'm actually just going to do red. Um, because ultimately, I don't know what color it is and you won't see very much of it anyways. So I'm just going to quickly go over, um, like I said, most of the bottom here and, and paint it red. And then we'll move on and, and probably touch up the front a little bit more. And so there's the bottom of the train. Um, there's definitely some areas in there that are really difficult to get into, um, especially down underneath the chassis. Um, but really, you know, once again, this is a part of the, the, the vehicle that once you're, you have it on display, it's not really going to be seen. Um, it's mostly just there to, to, to have coverage in case you do look. Um, but you really don't need to, to spend a lot of time on the bottom of the vehicle um, since that's not where the focus is generally going to be. Um, the focus should be um, on the top of the vehicle and making sure that that all looks nice. I'll put that one in there. Um, go and add another coat to the front again now. Um, so once again, we'll get this uh, pearly white Add that over the license plate. Uh, once again, over the headlights as well. Same with the orange. I want a, a little bit more of this orange uh, to show through. So we'll kind of layer it on there thick. And there's the front of the vehicle there. Um, the Six Flags doesn't quite show through as much as I, I was hoping it would on the license plate. Uh, we may do something with that, may just leave it as is. Um, we'll see. Um, but now that I got that there, um, I did get a little bit of uh, spillover with the chrome onto the red. Uh, so I'm actually just really quick while I have this brush and while I'm looking at the front, I'm going to get this, uh, this red and just kind of go over some of the chrome that we spilled over right there. Um, same on this side as well. And there's a lot of the details in that. So the next piece is probably going to be the wheel assemblies. Um, the wheel assemblies are kind of actually the same uh, metallic gray that we used before. Um, and the chassis of the train, I'm actually just gonna do straight black. Um, so we'll probably start with the chassis. I'll flip this back upside down again. Um, we'll get just some black paint. Uh, we used some black on the restraints before. Get a little bit more there. Get one of our brushes dried off. Actually, we'll turn it onto its side. And then just get the, the paint and come in here and paint in the chassis. Um, the chassis is something you kind of want to disappear uh, after you have it on the stand. And so by doing it in black, it helps do that. Um, I can't see the chassis on the actual coaster, uh, but I have to imagine it's some kind of black or dark gray color um, and so this is where we're, we're going with that 
and that's where there's really no right or wrong way to do um, this. There's most of the angles of the train you're able to find uh, online or by going to the park and taking pictures of it. Um, however, there are certain aspects of the vehicle that you're just simply not going to be able to find. Going around the wheels, you do want to be careful, um, especially if you're doing black like this, because um, you know, once you go and do the chrome, the chrome is not going to cover the black very well. So now that I've finished the chassis of the vehicle, um, the last thing to paint on the actual vehicle uh, before we move on to the stand is going to be the wheels. Um, the wheels are a little bit darker metallic than we found on the other stuff. Um, so for that, I'm actually going to use, uh, once again, this metallic paint. So I'm going to put some of that down. Um, but I'm also going to mix it with some black, um, just to, to darken it up a little bit. We'll mix that together really good. And that's creating a much darker, um, almost like gunmetal uh, type metallic uh, to do the wheels with. Uh, with this, we can just apply some, some fairly large strokes just over uh, the wheel assemblies. Also get the edges a little bit there. Gives it a nice uh, differential between that and the bumper. That is going to complete uh, the right vehicle. Um, so as you can see, there, there's a lot of details there. I'm not going to quite assemble it back together quite yet. Um, first, I'm just going to put it down upside down to dry so the wheel assembly can dry. Um, and then I'm going to clean up this mess and then get ready to stain the stand. So now that I've completed painting the actual vehicle, um, it's time to move on to the stand. Uh, for the stand, I decided to disassemble it and uh, do the pieces individually. Probably not necessary, um, but it does make it a little bit easier. Once again, if you're going to do uh, this, this project, uh, if you're, if you're going to paint it when you purchase it, it may be easier to paint um, some of the pieces as you go along. Uh, for the stand, because the new Texas Giant has a wooden structure, I chose instead to stain it. Um, so I, I, I've got a, a can of uh, dark walnut stain here. And I'm actually going to start on the bottom just to make sure I can get this uh, looking nice. Um, but I'm just going to kind of go over uh, the wood and, and put down a, a nice coat of stain here. It's going to give it a, a, a dark but natural uh, looking finish, very similar to the actual structure of the ride. Uh, maybe not the exact same color, um, but very, very, very close. I chose this color because I felt like it, it really matched the red um, quite well. Uh, I'm going to get that away a little bit right there. Uh, just like I said, put a, a nice uh, coat of stain uh, right here over uh, the bottom of the wood. Um, it does look pretty dark right now, um, however, as it dries, you can see that it's actually getting a little bit lighter. Um, I'll move across and, and continue doing the rest of these pieces as well. And then I'll sit here and let them dry um, just for, for a few minutes. Um, while I'm doing that, um, I'm actually going to move back to the vehicle while I allow uh, the, these sides to dry. Um, so with the vehicles I mentioned at the very start, um, I wanted to put the Texas Giant wording around the front of the vehicle. Um, to do that, I've actually created a mini decal with the wording. Um, I recreated the, the font from a, a photo that I had of the train. Um, so, and I, and I cut it out of, of vinyl. Uh, so now as I peel this off, so as the wood continues to dry there, I'm actually going to shift my focus to adding the Texas Giant wording to the front of the train. Um, so I've actually created on the computer, uh, recreated the text that goes in the font that goes on the front of the train, and I've cut it out of vinyl here. And I've applied it here to this, this transfer tape um, that I'll then use to put that onto the train. Um, I'm gonna peel this away. So you can see my decal right there. Um, and so then I'm just gonna apply this to uh, the front of the train. Once again, you'll remember that I did the red paint up uh, here first, and that was so that it could set up enough um, that we could then apply this vinyl. And very carefully peel away uh, the transfer tape. Make sure we don't peel away any of the letters with it. 
and then we'll just kind of press the letters in a little bit. Um, it's definitely not perfect, um, but it looks pretty cool uh, to have Texas Giant written there on the front. Uh, we can also start putting the train back together now. Um, so we'll start with the horns. We'll add that to the front of the train. Just push that right back down into place. And then the same with the, the restraints that we've taken off earlier. Um, this is dry enough inside now that we can kind of push them back into place as well. And so there you can see the completed vehicle. Um, all in all, I think it looks pretty good. Um, we'll still set it down upside down and let the, the wheels continue to dry there um, as I now uh, shift back to the stand to take a look at it. So I'm going to flip over some of these pieces that have dried um, a little enough on the one side. Um, just flip that over um, and then uh, you know get back to uh, applying a, a coat of stain on this other side as well. Same with these other two pieces. Um, they may have a little bit of stain on them. And then to kind of finish it off, I'm actually going to use a paper towel here to, to kind of dab off uh, some of the excess stain, um, just uh, which is also going to lighten it up a little bit. So you can kind of see what the, the finished stain looks like on each of these pieces here. Uh, we do need to flip over and do the side with the logo as well. Um, so we'll get the, the logo the side there. Uh, once again, brush some stain onto here. This is gonna soak in a little bit and get some of the color uh, nice and even. So now that the staining is complete, the next step is to put this back together. Um, for the base, one thing I'm actually going to try to do, um, I created a metallic chrome logo. Um, so I'm actually going to try to apply this to the bottom of the base uh, so that we can have this logo instead. If not, then we'll flip it over and you can still see that logo there through the stain. Um, however, I felt with the new Texas Giant, uh, the metallic logo would definitely uh, look a little bit cooler and fit the theme of the ride. So there we have the chrome logo that you can see. I'm just gonna come down here to the bottom of the base right in the middle and simply press this in. Hold it a second. So there we have the final inlaid metal logo um, on the base. I think it looks really nice. Um, now we're gonna put the base back together. Um, just simply snap these pieces back into place uh, where they were before. We'll slide this piece back on top and then we'll reattach the vehicle to the stand um, right where it was when we started the video. And there is the completed uh, painted build. Uh, so all in all, it took a few hours to finish, um, but in the end I think it looks really nice. Uh, adds a lot more uh, character to than uh, what you just simply get out of the kit. Um, and ultimately leaves a lot of creativity to you. Um, you can really do whatever you want with it. Um, I did the, like I said, I did the red train. Um, you could do the black train, you could do the turquoise train, you could do whatever color train you wanted. Um, really uh, design it however you like it to be. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe and thank you for watching.